I know it's been a while since we did this, but hey, we back. First question came from my guy, Gareth. He said, and I appreciate you being a patron too, Gareth. He said, hey, Raven, hope you and your family are having a great summer. Hey, it's Florida. So it's like summer all year round. Even though when it gets below 70 degrees, that's when it's really cold, man. And I know some of y'all laughing right, but... Anybody from for when it gets below 70 degrees, that's when we bring the hoodies out, even though I always got a hoodie on. Anyway, anyway he said, uh, my question is, do you think we have enough right now to get at least 13 wins? Yes. Yeah. I think they definitely do. Um, will they? That'd be nice to get at least 13 wins. Like, so, so the floor being 13 and four, oh, that would be amazing. That'd be amazing. Now me, I say I say more like 11, 6, 12, 5. But hey, if the floor is 13, 4, I ain't gonna be complaining. And like really, as long as they got eight, they'll be straight. As long as they got eight, they'll be straight. They can they can be in any game. Um, but to really get over that hump, um, they need it from everybody. They need it from everybody. And, and eight got to step up too, of course. But they need it from everybody. It, it, it can't be Lamar Jackson, Superman, 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 save the day, save the day, save the day, save the day, every play, every game. It can't be that. They need more from everybody else. And hopefully as a collective unit, Ravens can make that hurdle. They can make that jump uh, to really get to that next level. But do they have enough for 13 wins? Oh, yeah, for sure. And he said... Uh, the sports books thinks that's how many games we are going to win. Okay, well, we'll see. I don't really care for all the betting and stuff. I don't get into all that. But, hey, we'll see. Uh, and he said, do you think we have an undrafted free agent wide receiver that will get us to a deep run? Because I think we do. Um, oof, that, oof, that, so many factors would be, would, it would just depend on so many factors. Because um, they got some guys like Makai Polk. Um, I think he could be one of them that could help uh, Shamar Bridges. He could be another one because, again, that route running is so smooth. It's so smooth. Uh, I like Devin Williams. But, yeah, but can they help get us to a deep run? Mm. That's a lot to put on a lot of unproven guys. That's a lot. Uh, when I was watching the playoffs, um, I think it was game. I think it was game two. The finals, I mean. Um, a game two and it was before the game and, and, and they were showing the Warriors and they were like, hey, man, what, how are these young guys, these young guys, they feeling kind of nervous. They need somebody to calm them down. And, and they were like, oh, the vets, they done been here before. So they can help sort of ease the young guys. And that reminded me of the Ravens. And I'm like, man, it's like with our wide receiver room. They all young, which is it's exciting. But it's a lot of unknowns that come with that, uh, especially when everything is on the line. Um, and not, not that you necessarily need this old guy to come in and be like, hey, y'all, y'all boys, chill out, man. But having somebody there, it, it could help. Um, but as far as an undrafted free agent helping us have a deep run, it would all depend on how much they're used, too. Because, you know, Ravens, like, as far as they were, their receivers, uh, they don't really put much emphasis on the receivers as is. Um, so for an undrafted free agent, so there's no big financial commitment there. So there might not be that sense of urgency to really use that guy like that. So I don't know, man. I, I, don't, I don't know. That's a tricky question. Uh, he said, I would appreciate your advice as I would love your input. Uh, you got me through a hard couple of months as I lost two family members. Oh, hey, hey, sorry to hear that, Gareth. Sorry. Um, yeah, sorry that you, 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 you went through that, man. But I appreciate you sharing that with everybody because um, everybody, everybody got their own situation. And, and for you to be willing to share uh, your situation, that's that's real right there. So I, I pre we appreciate it. We all appreciate it. So thank you for being willing to do that, man. Uh, best wishes to you and your family. Keep up the great work. Love you. And shout out the team. Keep it clean. Appreciate that, GC. Next question came from my guy, Phil. And appreciate you being a patron as well, my friend. He said, today on June 1st, so not too long ago, but today on June 1st, I was watching Colin Coward, his show on FS1. What I'm about to explain isn't me. It's what was said on a live sports show. So please don't throw comments at me. So he letting y'all know it's not him that's saying it. I got to let y'all know, it's not me that's saying it. It was on, from the show. So, 
let's move forward. Um, he said, uh, Peter King from NBCSports.com was a guest, and they chatted about Lamar being absent from OTAs. And Peter King said, uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, about and, and about how awkward this is about Lamar not having an agent to call with how things have carried on with the player not wanting to be paid yet, which they've never seen. But then at the end, Peter King came out and said that he had one last thing to say on what he thinks of this. He explained he's starting to feel that EDC and Harbaugh might be taking this slowly and private by paying the fifth year option and perhaps not being positively sure Lamar is the right quarterback to pay 43 to $45 million to for the next five to 10 years because he believes he plays so poorly during the playoffs with being one and three where the office is taking this year by year. What are your thoughts? Mm. It's an interesting one right here. Um, with the Ravens, I, I I've said this before. Um, I I don't feel like they are one hundred percent sold on Lamar Jackson. Now, I feel like they should be. I, I feel like he's given them plenty of reasons too. Uh, but I feel like from the way that they've moved, it seems like they are not one hundred percent sold on him. Reason being. Uh, is the same reason one of the same reasons that I've been saying for a couple of reasons actually. One, um, the offense, the same offense, same offense they've been running. Uh, them continuing to uh, retain Greg Roman, who specializes where he specializes at, at an, as an offensive coordinator, and he's always specialized in these same areas. Running game, awesome. Tight ends, a hey, awesome, great job without much emphasis on the wide receivers. That's Greg Roman. And the, for, to, for him to introduce Lamar to the NFL, it was great. But it feels like there's just, like it's been a, a lack, not a lack of growth, but I feel like there could have been just so much more. It feels like Lamar Jackson could have been doing so much more by now, but we're in year five and it feels like he has not reached his full potential. I feel like he hasn't reached his full potential. And then another thing, too, with the lack of really providing Lamar Jackson that significant outside threat. They have not done that. They haven't. They haven't. And I know some people, oh, hey, well, Lamar Jackson, he doesn't really throw outside the numbers. Well, he does, and he certainly attempts to. But who's he throwing to? Who's he throwing outside the numbers to? What, have, what significant guy have they provided him with an outside receiver? They had Hollywood, drafted him in the first round, and Hollywood was cool, but Hollywood was, what, 5'9"? He was a smaller guy, smaller stature, and, and with Lamar, they obviously had a great connection, but with Hollywood, you got to put, it got to be like right on the money. But who, what else have they done there? Well, Rashad Bateman, we'll see, of course, and we expect him to do good, but why are we still having the same conversation in year five? Year five. They sound what Sammy Watkins, Spin Willie Sneed, Seth Roberts, Dez Bryant. What, like what? They have not and, and you look, you look around at all these other young quarterbacks. There were questions about Josh Allen. So what did the Bills do? They were like, mm, we got questions about him. We, mm, we, we we not all the way sold on it. You know what? Let's get him a really, really good wide receiver. We we don't want him to have any excuses. Got him Stephon Diggs. Boom. Josh Allen skyrocketed. Skyrocketed. Kyler Murray, number one overall pick. They went and got him DeAndre Hopkins. They went and got him A.J. Green. And then with, with him still having those guys, they went and still got him his, his college boy, one of his best friends. Hollywood. With Tua. <laughs> Goodness gracious. With Joe Burrow. It's, I mean, hey, I was about to say it's a little different because they had to do a lot of losing to get what they got, but they, they still got it. They still got it. So you, you, you see just all these other young quarterbacks. Baker Mayfield. With that situation, before the Browns were, or before the Browns became what they are now with that whole mess going on, but Baker Mayfield, they provided for this guy, man. 
It really did. Significantly. But the Ravens, that's why I feel like they're not 100% sold on Lamar because of the lack of them providing for him. It's year, it's literally year five and we still having these same conversations, man. And I don't want to hear that, oh, they drafted the most wide receivers. Quality over quantity, man. And that, that ain't no shot at the guys that they got, but the Ravens have not got that guy for him. All these other young quarterbacks, they gave them those guys. They gave them that guy for those other young quarterbacks. But for Lamar, the Ravens have not done that. They have not done that. So that's why I feel like they're not 100% sold on them. For, for those are my two biggest reasons why I feel like they're not, they not all in on Lamar. We know what Lamar did for them. He saved John Harbaugh's job. He saved, saved the Ravens. Saved them big time in 2018 because they, <laughs> they were headed down a slippery slope. And that, but that slope, they have been sliding down that slope for years. We all knew that. You Ravens fan, we all knew that the, the, the franchise was in, it was in trouble, man. It was like, ooh, yeah, we about to hit that reset button. It's on the way. I, yeah, I'll never forget. I remember after that, the Steelers game, um, when the Ravens, because they were 4-4, four and four, then they lost to the Steelers at home, where they just absolutely had no life. But the Steelers game... Um, I remember after that game, I remember tweeting, goodbye, John Harbaugh, goodbye, Joe Flacco. Because I was a thousand percent sure that was it for both of them. That was it. I'm like, oh, yeah, this this our, this our last year with both of them. I was like, okay, all right, we're going to see what's next. But then, insert Lamar Jackson. Insert Lamar Jackson. And, boy, he put the fattest Band-Aid on the Ravens organization, the fattest Band-Aid. And he was like, oh, okay, I got y'all. Mm -hmm. There you go. All right, hey, we, we, we good now, right? We better now, right? He changed everything. Changed everything. But I, I'm not sold that they are 100% sold on him. Yeah, we heard all the reports. Oh, yeah, but said, oh, I'm, I'm ready to pay him. Ready to give him the money. And then, of course, he heard the rumors that oh they they offered him they offered him a deal who knows how much it was we we just don't know we don't know there were rumors that it was 35 mil per year is that true no clue no clue we don't know we really don't know um but i'm just i'm not sold that they are sold uh if that makes sense i just i i don't see it right now um so do I feel like they should be sold? Oh, yeah. And I feel like they should have given themselves even more reasons to be sold by providing him more. Off the, what you did this offseason, nice. St still some more missing, though. But offensive line, you upgraded that. Oh, yeah, yeah, great job. Got, like, all them running backs, all them tight ends. Oh, yeah, yeah, great job. But, yeah, I just, so, yeah, I, I don't, as far as this, uh, I don't think they are 100% in on him. And yeah, the fifth year option, that's for all first round picks to really like be sure. Like, oh, is, is this guy a real deal or not? So that them doing the fifth year option, not really a big deal to me. Um, it does buy them out more time. But again, the longer you wait, the highest price goes up. Uh, so it works out for him. Um, but as far as the playoffs, yeah, this to me, yeah, the, the, the playoffs, the Ravens are one and three under Lamar Jackson in the playoffs. Um, so that is a problem when you look at it for the surface value. Then you really look into it and look at the playoff games. And then when you think, oh, okay. All right. That, um, the first, the first playoff game, I, I forget about that one a lot, against the Chargers. It's like, okay, y'all played the Chargers two, two times in three weeks. Or was it four weeks? I think it was two times in three weeks. You played them very close. And you decided, you, you came out running the same exact thing for three and a half quarters. You came out running the same kind of offense. You just beat them, yeah, a couple of weeks ago. But then you came out in the playoff game running the same exact thing for three and a half quarters. It didn't work after the first quarter. It's like, okay, I understand you're going to keep trying. 
Wasn't working after the second quarter. It's like, oh, okay, uh, hello. Third quarter still wasn't working. You still kept trying it. Same thing. No adjustments. No adjustments. Recipe for disaster. For disaster. And I think that was Marty Morningweg. But recipe for disaster. Then, so that was the first playoff game. So, boom, 0-1. Okay. Second playoff game. Oh, everybody just want to decide they want to drop everything, huh? Tip drill, interceptions, drops, 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 and drops. And Lamar, he got rattled, too. He got rattled, too. But offensive line, they weren't blocking. The play calling was terrible. They decided they wanted to run the ball, I think, what, nine times total? The turnovers killed them, though. Turnovers on fourth down, the drop pass, the turn interceptions, the interceptions. Um, but, yeah, that was just that – was, that, that game was just as pitiful as the first one. And what made it worse is that you had a, a much better team or a much more successful team. Um, but same stuff. So then the following year, you beat the Titans. All right, cool. You, so you got your one. You got the one win. All right, cool. Even though that game was, ooh, I had to be a little Superman in that one too. But then against the Bills, against the Bills, Bills are dominating that run game. Bills are like, y'all ain't about to run on us. Y'all, mm-mm, no, nah, man, y'all ain't running on us. Lamar with the, the, the pick six, and even then it was still a game. It was still a game. Uh, but then we didn't, even get a, we didn't even get a chance to Justin Tucker. He missed two field goals. Um, but we didn't even get a chance to see if Lamar could have possibly came back. Because what was the final score? 17-3? to three? It was something low like that. I think it was 17-3. to three, Something like that. But, like, we didn't even get a chance to see the full game because Lamar got taken out. Why? Because <laughs> Patrick McCarry, he wanted to turn into a quarterback and throw a deep ball. So Lamar couldn't even finish the game. So that's one of them things we'll just, we'll never know. We'll never know what it could have been. We'll never know. So he is... Technically, it's like he's one in three, but it's almost like he's like one in two and a half or something. But okay, one in three in playoff games that he started. But that's why it's important to it's important to look deeper into it than just look. Oh, look look at look at it on a sheet of paper. Oh man, one in three in the playoffs. Oh wow, terrible. No, look look at why. Look look at the actual games. Don't just look at the paper. Don't just look at the stat sheet. Look at the actual games, and then you'd be, oh, wow, hold up now. Wait a minute. Is he really that bad in the playoffs? Or are there a lot of other contributing factors? Now, again, he got to step his game up too now. Again, like I said before, he is not inexcusable. He is not perfect. So he got to step his game up too. And there are things that he can do in the regular season, and they can continue to carry that in the playoffs. They can just build up a level of consistency there. But with that whole playoff win thing, that's... The bottom line is that the Ravens lost in the playoffs. That's, that's true. There ain't no escaping that. But it's not so simple as a lot of people make it out to be. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it. How to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. So YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another episode of Questions from Subs. A question where you can ask any question. A, a video where you can ask any question. <laughs> this is about NFL. Uh, well, yeah, about NFL. Uh, it's been so long, I don't forgot the intro. But anyway, appreciate y'all, man. I appreciate all you subscribers, all the patrons, everybody supporting the channel. Um, thank you for doing what you've been doing. Uh, because it does mean a whole lot. Um, I appreciate you subscribing, telling people, you commenting, liking the videos, um, just showing support in the most, the craziest ways. Uh, we had 55,000 subscribers now. It's kind of weird to, to, to say that out loud, um, but we appreciate it for sure. Um, nothing that happens on here could be done uh, without y'all. Team Keep It Clean, so I appreciate it. Uh, big time, I appreciate just for you, you all's being willing um, to support. So thank you for that. Uh, we only got a couple more questions to do because uh, I feel like this episode been running on. We just get into the intro and we like 20, 25 minutes in. 
Uh, but it, it's okay. But anyway, let's do these couple more questions. Um, because y'all, again, we got a lot of questions. We got a whole lot of like way backed up. But I appreciate y'all for understanding, and I appreciate y'all for being so patient. Thank you for that very much because y'all know like stuff gets busy uh real fast like real fast stuff can get busy just like that uh and there's other stuff that we want to cover but we we wanted to do some questions from subs so let's get into it well get into it a bit more because we done already got into it but let's get into it a bit more and answer some of these fire questions next question came from my boy john he said first i want to start off by saying what's up what's up john he said and also saying i predicted the chance of dk coming to us last year on your show hey <laughs> you, you, well, you still got time for that prediction to come true if that happened i would be a very very happy person um but anyway he said my question for today is why not have chuck clark play middle linebacker He's known as one of the smarter players on our team defensively. Why not ask him to bulk up this this way? Patrick Queen doesn't have to take on so much responsibility of reading versus reacting. Oh, well, I love how you worded that question. Um, and yeah, I, I, the Ravens have already done that uh, in the past, had him down there in the box. Um, so yeah, I, I would expect them, if they keep him, I would expect them to just continue that. So, and yeah, him he, he could bulk up a little bit. Um, but at the same time, a lot of sometimes he has trouble in coverage. Sometimes he just get out muscled, out manned in coverage, uh, boxed out. Um, but he is going against bigger tight ends, so it's tough. Um, so if he bulked up, that could make him lose a little bit of speed. He's not like no burner, nothing like that. But if he loses a little bit of speed, then that could make it even tougher for him to cover. But it could make him more physical and maybe press those tight ends a little bit more. Ah, it's 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 tricky, man. Um, if it was balanced, like balance him bulking up, but him not losing too much speed, but ah. So, yeah, they, they could do it, but it just all depends on how they go about it. Because I just wouldn't want him to be put in a situation where he has even more trouble in coverage. This question came from my guy, Ken Pachi. He said, what's up, Engraven? What's up, Ken? Uh, I want to address the wide receiver situation. I'll start by saying the Ravens need a Mark Andrews at wide receiver, plain and simple. Uh, I like ba Batman Rashad Bateman a lot. He can seemingly do it all, in my humble opinion. But that isn't going to be enough to break the Ravens' current playoff ceiling. So now the question becomes... Who can the Ravens give up to gain another receiver that can make an immediate impact? I, I like that. I, I, I like your thinking. Uh, I don't have the immediate answer, but I do think a Keenan Allen or a Debo Samuel would be looking in the right direction as far as what the Ravens need. Let me know what you think. Ooh, we talked about Debo a lot, but a Keenan Allen. Ooh, that would be a lovely one right there. Ooh, just be a little bit worried about the injuries, but... Can that, like that's one that I don't ever think about And Keenan Allen is like that man He is like that Hands, route running Size, decent amount of speed So I, I like that idea Nobody has said that I, At least they haven't said it to me But I appreciate you bringing that one to our attention And the last question came from my boy Nicholas He said three bold predictions Hey Engraven I've been thinking about the receiver situation recently I'd never say never But it's starting to look like we're going to roll with what we got we're going to see, man. Uh, that being said, I have faith Batman to be our number one wide receiver. But I do find there is a glaring hole as a solid number two. Uh, Bateman isn't a, <laughs> isn't a miracle worker, and he's going to get blanketed in some games going against number one corners. Yes. And this is another reason. Another reason why I feel like the Ravens should get another significant wide receiver. But anyway, uh, he said we need someone else who can be all reliable. My bold prediction is one of our undrafted free agent wideouts will have a decent season and hopefully become our number two guy in years to come. Now, see, is that really a bold prediction if you said hopefully? Because if, if it was a bold prediction, it'd be like, hey, one of our undrafted free agent wide receivers, they getting ready to break out. They getting ready to be that number two receiver. But they, <laughs> and I'm just messing with you, man. So don't take it personal, please. Um, but he said, namely Bridges or Williams from what I've seen. Keep in mind, Cup went undrafted as well. He did? I thought he was like a fifth round pick. Cooper Cup? Nah, yeah, I think yeah, I think he's like a fifth round pick. Something like that. Anyway, uh, my second prediction is Kyle Hamilton will be in defensive rookie of the year talks okay he put o-d-r-o-y -O i think he was thinking offensive for somebody else but then he put defensive but anyway uh defensive rookie of the year talks will ultimately get snubbed for thibs oh Kayvon Thibodeau. uh and my third is hayes will have a four to five sack season before a job comes back i don't really think that's that bold for Hayes, I don't think that's that bold everything of course depends on playing time but Dalen hayes when he was out there 
He looked good. He looked good. Dalen Dip Hayes. So he 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 looked good. Shout out to my guy Haitian Sensation. Um, but and, and we'll have a spot as a rotating pass rusher for the rest of the season. So yeah, because they they're probably gonna get Justin Houston back most likely. Um, but Tyus Bowser coming back off of Achilles, we'll see how he responds, how healthy he is. Um, but you and Justin Houston, David Ajabo, Achilles, so he probably ain't gonna be out there for a while. Dalen Hayes got a shot. Um, Jalen Ferguson, this wishy washy about him. So Dalen Hayes got a shot. He got an opportunity right here. He got an opportunity right here with these guys in front of him injured. Justin Houston not not being a three down outside linebacker. He got a shot to to get into the rotation, take advantage of the unfortunate circumstances, um, and make the most of it. So I don't really think it's that bold that he would have four to five sacks. He said, "What are your thoughts?" All my bold predictions. Well, we gave our thoughts live over, but he said not to put you on the spot. But what are your bold predictions for this season? Ooh, my bold predictions for this season. Um, hmm. I will say Bateman. Depending on the receiver situation, we'll see what they do. Uh, I say Bate Bateman could get twelve hundred, uh, twelve hundred yards. I say twelve hundred and eight touchdowns. 1,200 yards and eight touchdowns. And I don't even, that, that ain't even really that bold, really. It's, it's, it's really not that bold. Um, with Bateman, um, I think he can get that because, simply because of the yak. He's a yak guy. Uh, he's a make somebody miss guy. And he got some good speed, too. He ain't got crazy speed, but he got good speed. Um, and he got, he got a decent size. He's like 6'2, 6'1, 6'2. Um, so he'll jump up there and go get it. Um, another bold prediction if J.K. Dobbins is healthy, Hopefully he's healthy. If he stays healthy, um, I can see him running for. I can see him running for about twelve fifty, thousand two hundred fifty yards, um, and him getting eleven touchdowns. So him breaking double digits and touchdowns and really like going off, especially in this passing league, right? Well, you know we're running teams. So. Um, and uh, uh, an even bolder prediction, um, mm, Greg Roman actually makes it through the whole season. Yeah, this feels like a dream, and you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan, and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. Shout out to Graven.